Well, here we are. Week 7. Somehow, we're about halfway through the season. I don't know how we're halfway through the season in college football. Yeah, I realize this is a Thursday. I have work. Y'all didn't know this by now? Yeah, you, you should have known that I'm a substitute teacher now. But, you know, it is what it is. So we got we got an interesting one. We got one of the biggest slates of college football, and it's already started with the game on Wednesday night. There's games going on right now on Thursday night. There's going to be games on Friday, but the big picture is on Saturday. We have six ranked matchups. That's right, six top 25 matchups for the taking. And honestly. Picking which one of these is going to be the game of the week is going to be kind of hard. But I'll let you know. I'll let you know as we get into it. Um, so we have that noon slate. And starting with Auburn Ole Miss. I wonder if Auburn's going to put up a fight. Because, I mean, that defense has been kind of eh. That offense has been eh. And then you got Jackson Dart. You got Quinshawn Jenkins. You got Zach Evans. You got a nice receiving core. I mean, the Rebels. They are looking pretty right now. They they might be able to walk into November unbeaten if they can keep this up. You know, like this is, this type of performance right here is, is what you make dreams of so far this year. And while the fight ain't over yet, you know, for Auburn, you know, they, they could still make some damage. But, I mean, as far as, like, you know, the SEC, I don't, I don't know if they're going to win that. You know, like, Ole Miss has a better shot at doing it right. And I, I think if Auburn can actually put up a fight, then this game will be a little closer. Kansas, Oklahoma. Kansas, Oklahoma has been relegated. Yeah, I swear, this is like the first ESPN2 game for, like, for Oklahoma in quite some time. Dylan Gabriel, it seems he will be back. We all know Davis Bevel was absolutely terrible against Texas. At the Jayhawks, they don't have Jalen Daniels. They have the UNT transfer. That's my school, UNT. The transfer, Jason Bean. He'll start, and we know them wide receivers, but Kansas can go. Um, Oklahoma's defense has to get it. Yeah, they have to do something to stop Kansas. Like, these wide receivers, the way they was playing against TCU last week, if they continue this up against OU and OU's defense continues to falter, it's going to be a long day. It's going to be a very long day for Oklahoma. Okay. And then my Texas Longhorns, Quint Ewers, and those horns. What a nice defense, by the way. Nice defense, you know. You know the other, yeah, there's been some times, you know, the Texas Tech game really being the big outlier. But, you know, for the most part, this defense has been better. Quinn Ewers definitely makes this offense go around the way it should be. And they got to keep up this momentum. You know, Iowa State, that defense, that ain't no one-trick pony. That defense can play. You know, the Cyclones, they have a little bit of, they have some problems with Hunter Deckers at quarterback, a running back room that just isn't very stable right now and a team that can't score an offense. But if Iowa State can score something against Texas, if Iowa State can score something against Texas and maybe scare Texas a little bit, then Texas might have to play a little harder than this because apparently, like, the Horns are a 17.5 point favor. You know, I don't really look at point lines like that. But, um, Iowa State, you might have to get some offense to beat Texas. I don't know if defense is going to be enough. You got to have offense. You know. There's also Minnesota, Illinois. As a, a nice running back battle goes in this one. It's Chase Brown for the Illini. Goes up against Mohamed Ibrahim for the Gophers. Uh, I swear I said Illini wrong. You also got a, a um, Gophers team that's had a couple losses, you know, in there. And they need to keep. They need to get back on track. You know, they've had some time to rest. They need to get back on track. You got Tanner Morgan. You got a talented team that you know should be you know unbeaten right now. But instead, Minnesota's not unbeaten, and it is what it is. And you know, Illinois is ranked for the first time in quite some time. I swear, it's been like a decade since Illinois has been ranked, and Illinois is savoring it right now. But the one you want to watch in the noon window, oh boy, 
a top 10 matchup. Penn State, Michigan, Big Noon, Fox, Blake Horm, Ronnie Bell, J.J. McCarthy for the Wolverines. A defense for Penn State that has been malicious. Sean Clifford, Nick Singleton, that Nittany Lions team, they, this is going to be a fight. This is going to be a fight, a heavyweight fight between two teams that are itching to get to the college football playoff. Michigan trying to go back, Penn State trying to go for the first time because we all know, you know, you know, yeah, they had two losses a couple years ago, but they felt they should have went in. I don't think they should have, though. But this one is going to be a real interesting one. Both these teams have some good defenses. Both these teams have some good lines. Both these teams can run the ball. It's just going to be one hell of a fight. I cannot wait for this one. Definitely a game of the week type feel, but it's not my game of the week because um, it's the only one in the window that's, you know, with the ranked team. In the afternoon, though, you got three of them. You got th three of them. And my game of the week is this game. Oklahoma State, TCU. Yes, it is. It was coming. I mean, come on. Spencer Sanders versus Max Duggan. One big-time, high-scoring showdown, you know, for the Big 12. A big-time game. You also got D winners on the defense for TCU, who's been a force to be reckoned with. You know, Oklahoma State's been kind of titter tatter at times, and th this game is gonna be this, this is gonna be one hell of a fight. Let me tell you, you thought Penn State Michigan was gonna be one hell of a fight. This is gonna be even more of a fight. This one is going to be a slobber knocker that will go down to the last seconds. Let me tell you, this will go down to the last few seconds. I bet you. These wide receivers for both these teams, these, I mean, these playmakers on these teams, man. This is going to be fun. I'm expecting something high octane in this one. And then you got NC State, Syracuse. That's right. The undefeated Cues. The undefeated Orangemen. Oh, yeah, they don't call them that anymore. Well, the Orange. You get it. You got this Wolfpack team. Got a got a good trio of, wide, of linebackers, not wide receivers. They got a good trio of linebackers. You know, Devin Leary, he might be starting. It. I hope it's not Jack Chambers, but it should be Devin Leary starting. And then you got a nice, nice Syracuse team. You got Garrett Schrader, Sean Tucker. I mean, this is just, this is a Syracuse team that has been underrated, undervalued, and unappreciated all season long. And they are attending the show NC State and the rest of the country, well, the rest of the country that can get ACC Network, what this team is all about. And we'll see how they are because they got some big ones, Syracuse does, the next couple weeks. They got some big games coming up. So we'll see if they keep this up. We'll see. You know, we'll see if they keep this momentum up. NC State, they got to win this. You cannot be behind in the ACC Atlantic. You cannot be behind. There's also Vanderbilt, Georgia in this window, but I mean, maybe Vanderbilt will make it a game because we all know Stetson Bennett and the Dogs have just not been able to, you know, do much on offense the last couple of weeks. They've been able to, they've been able to, you know, get to the finish line. They were able to win, you know, some of these games. Yeah, Auburn notwithstanding, I'm talking about Missouri and Kent State. I'm talking about those games. Auburn is a uh, it's it's a feat, you know, no less. Like Stetson Bennett didn't even throw for a touchdown last week, you know. Yeah, he ran for one, but he, you know, you throw for 300 yards and you don't throw any touchdowns. That's kind of concerning, you know. Like, you can't have a wishy-washy week where you have a good week one week and a bad week another. You gotta have it all together. You gotta have all your marbles in the table, and. Georgia has to have all their marbles on the table as time continues to go on. They got to keep this up. They got to keep a solid, solid game up. And then Alabama, Tennessee. Oh boy. Big one. Number three versus number six. Bryce Young. Probably. As we all know, Jalen Milrow ain't it. Against Hendon Hooker. And that high octane, fast paced. Quick scoring balls offense. This this one, if Alabama's defense can't stay 
with the Vols. This might be some trouble for him. This might be some trouble for Nick Saban and Ty. We all know the Vols haven't beaten Alabama in over a decade. They want another win. They haven't beaten them since 06. They want to win. They need it. Tennessee needs it to staple themselves as that team that's back. You know, they want to be one of those teams, you know, that has been down on their luck for so long, and now they want to say they're back. They have to prove it, though. Tennessee has to prove it. They beat up on LSU already, but they got to beat Alabama. Can they do that? We'll find out. Can Alabama bounce back? Because, yeah, you almost lost to A&M last week. You really did. You know, if it weren't for A&M's incompetence, you probably would have lost that game last week. So we'll see if Alabama can, you know, get themselves under control. We'll see if Bryce Young plays. I hope he does so we can get a good fight between Alabama and Tennessee. And then guess who got into the top 25? James Madison. Hey, buddy. You guys are still dominating. The Sun Belt. Hey, wait a minute. Why are you guys dominating the Sun Belt this early? What's wrong with y'all? I know y'all are just you're just going to be scoring at will on guys, but don't take it out on Georgia Southern like that, you know? Don't take it out on them. You know, if Georgia Southern happens to do something, yes, remember, Clay Helton is coaching Georgia Southern's team, by the way. Remember, if, if Georgia Southern happens to do something against James Madison, don't, don't, don't fault Georgia Southern or anything. Don't fault James or anything. Just fault the Sun Belt for being, you know, one of the funnest conferences to watch this season. You know, I, maybe something goes wrong in this game, but, the, you know, the, the, the other option is probably nothing's going to go wrong in this game, and we're awaiting that collision course with James Madison and Coastal Carolina in late November. And I hope that that stays the course, and I hope if there's not enough six-win teams, you know, to go bowling, James Madison. We need to put them in something. We need to put them in the New Year's Six Bowl. We need to do something with them. Because, I mean, this team, all they did was, you know, add 22 scholarships and immediately, like that, competing like it ain't nothing. And, I mean, this is already a high-caliber team that's won national championships and stuff like that. So, I mean, this is really no problem for them. Then in the evening... In the evening, we got um, another couple of big matchups here. It's not as much in this late slate, you know, that you don't you don't want to keep your eyes on too much. But you want to you want if you want to have like a triple screen, it you might want to do that because we got Mississippi State, Kentucky, the Battle of the Wills, Will Rogers for the Bulldogs, and Will Levis for Kentucky. Kentucky barely hanging on in the rankings. They know. They know. They should have, you know, won these last couple games. But instead, Kentucky just completely shit the bed. They completely poop poop the bed. They poop poop in their sheet sheets. In the bed. Just like that. And it's just it's just devastating for them. And Mississippi State, you know they're still kind of reeling from that loss to LSU, right? Yeah, they are. But if they, if Will Rogers can continue to throw the ball like he's been throwing the ball, I mean, what's what's stopping them? What's stopping them from doing anything? Kentucky, they got, we all know what they got in the backfield. We all know what they got throwing the ball. You know, with Will Levis and Chris Rodriguez. But I'm trying to see, you know, if Kentucky's defense can actually play a full four quarters again. So they haven't been able to play a full four quarters these last couple weeks, and they got to do that in order to stay the course and stay ranked. And then you got Clemson, Florida State. This one's gonna be a this one's gonna be a tough one. Dabble Swinney and company, they got to stay focused. Clemson, you know, hasn't played the biggest world beaters all season. NC State unfortunately decided to bow out and lose. In a non-competitive game, Boston College, nothing special. You know, the rest of Clemson Slate, nothing special. So in comes the Knowles, led by Mike Norvell, Jordan Travis, and a dynamic 
running game. A, a, a Florida State team that can actually play ball. They can actually put up points, you know. So this ain't going to be easy. This is not going to be easy for Clemson. They got to do something. They got to. Clemson has to do something. That can't be, you know, just relying on that defense. They got to get the playmakers out there. You know, I've seen this offense struggle sometimes. And, like, throughout the season, Georgia Tech being a big example. Like, this offense, if you know, this is not, this is not Boston College. This is not... This is this is not you know a pushover. This is a Florida State team. Yeah, they've lost two straight, but they can play with you. They can fight with you. Wake Forest being another example where you know that defense got bullied. You know that Clemson defense got bullied by Wake Forest. Florida State's defense also got bullied by Wake Forest at times, but Clemson's defense was getting thrashed, and that and that's not the recipe for success. You know. And then the last game of the night, the last of the ranked games, the last of the six highlighted games is USC-Utah. I don't know why Utah's still ranked. We all know this is a good Utah defense, though. You got R.J. Hubert, Cole Bishop, and the Cam Rising-led offense. You know, But they cannot let bad things happen to them again like last week against UCLA. They got to do something better. You know, Look at the turnovers. Look at the big plays. You know, this is a USC team, you know, that they, 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 they are, they're something. They're undefeated. They're number seven. But I'm not impressed with them. Same thing, this, is, this applies to everybody except Ohio State. This applies to pretty much everybody except Ohio State. You know, the undefeated top ten teams. Not impressed with Michigan. Not impressed with USC. Not impressed with Clemson. You know, just not impressed. I'm not. Alabama, not impressed either. Not impressed. The USC is one of the biggest examples because they do not have a defense to save their lives. Yeah, the defense can pick off plays and make, you know, make things happen, but they give up way too many yards. And, you know, if you give up way too many yards to a competent offense, to a competent offense, a competent offense will score. A competent offense will score on you and get touchdowns. They won't turn it over or get field goals. They'll score on you and get touchdowns. That's what Utah can do. So I'm trying to see if USC's a big boy. Or do they want to be back? You want to be like Tennessee? You want to be back? Or, or do you want to, you know, cry and whine and moan and all that nonsense because you lost? Do you want to be winners? Or do you want to be losers? Because under Lincoln Riley, you're winners. Until you lose, and then you cry, and then you whine, and then you moan. So, USC, do you want to be like Lincoln Riley at OU? Or do you want to forge a new path with them? Because if you forge a new path with him, Lincoln Riley, he could be going to the stars. We'll see how this week goes. Week 7, it's coming. It's piping hot. And it's going to be absolutely delicious. A nice, beautiful slate of games that has already started and will continue to go all the way until technically Sunday because there's an FCS game on Sunday. By the way, if you're thinking of watching an FCS game, watch that number one versus number two matchup between the Dakotas. It's going to be a good one too. If you don't want to watch any of the 230 games, 230-330 games, watch that one. It's going to be a good one. Both those teams don't feel like they're confident enough to win it. I'm talking about North Dakota State and South Dakota State. They don't feel like they're confident enough to win it. But in any case, that's all I got. I'll see you in a few minutes, though, because um, I'm running a little behind on some videos. So uh, I'll be back with you in a few moments.